At AMD's presentation, they did not show any 7800 series of GPUs. This is in stark contrast to last generation where we saw two 6800s. Did AMD cancel the 7800 XT? Let's get into it. Looking back, one thing lacking from AMD's presentation of RDNA 3 was any mention of a 7800 GPU. Two years ago, when the RX 6000 series launched, we got three GPUs, one 6900 XT and two 6800s. The 6800 XT was a clear competitor to the RTX 3080, and that was made clear with a direct comparison in all of their gaming charts. The 6900 XT was a clear competitor to the RTX 3090, and again, that was the direct comparison in all of their gaming charts. And the 6800 was compared to the 2080 Ti, which is similar to the 3070, according to NVIDIA. The 3070 launched the day after AMD's presentation. Back then, from one large die in Big Navi, they created these three GPUs. Two years later, when the new generation is launched, from one large die, we get two GPUs. And there is no mention of the 7800, which got me thinking, was it canceled from the lineup? I wanted to compare the GPUs based on their specifications, so I took the specs from the RX 6000 GPUs and put them on a slide. From this, we can see the different number of compute units, clock speeds, memory, and total board power. Then I added the 7900 specs to that slide. So to be clear, the upper three are from the previous gen RX 6000 series based on Big Navi and RDNA 2, while the lower portion has the RX 7000 GPUs based on RDNA 3. And when I look at that chart, I see a couple of patterns. First, the RX 6800 had a version with 60 compute units, and it also had a version with 72 compute units for a total of a 12 compute unit difference. The new GPUs based on RDNA 3 also show a difference of 12 compute units. Next, the frequency between the same RDNA 2 cards had a difference of 200 MHz game clock, and the new GPUs based on RDNA 3 show a difference of 300 MHz game clock. Finally, the total board power of the two RDNA 2 cards showed a difference of 50 watts, and the new GPUs based on RDNA 3 show a difference of 55 watts. But the similarities don't end there. In terms of pricing, the two RDNA 2 cards were different by $70, which is 12%, and the new RDNA 3 cards show a price difference of $100, which is 11%. And you know what? That lowest Big Navi die with 60 compute units in the 6800 did not sell. Nobody bought that GPU. Well, not nobody. People who could not get the 6800 XT because of the mining boom bought that GPU. And people who needed a two-slot card for a small form factor build bought that card. But barring those two conditions, nobody bought that card. And that will be the same fate of the 7900 XT. No one is going to buy that card. No one. Going into the announcement, conventional thinking said that AMD was going to have a 7900 XT to compete with the 4090, and a 7800 XT would compete with the 4080. That just follows with what we saw in the 6000 series. The 6800 XT competed with the 3080, and the 6900 XT competed with the 3090. So I removed the 60 compute unit version that nobody bought, and then rearranged the chart to show the generational upgrade. The top half shows the upgrade from the 6900 XT. The bottom half shows the upgrade from the 6800 XT. And when I compare the specs of the new flagship with 96 compute units, you see a 20% difference in compute units, a higher game clock, 50% more VRAM, and a higher total board power. And from a hardware perspective, that looks like a worthy generational upgrade. Comparing the 6800 XT specs to the new 84 CU version, and we see a 17% increase in CUs and a 25% increase in VRAM. And from a hardware perspective, it looks like a generational upgrade. And for the right price, I would give both of these a thumbs up. Now the 96 Compute Unit version stays at $999 just like the 6900 XT before it. Very nicely done, AMD. And in my last video, I said the 84 Compute Unit GPU makes no sense at $899, and this GPU would not be interesting unless it was priced at $749. Now I understand why I felt that way. That's because the 84 Compute Unit GPU, from a hardware perspective, is really the generational upgrade to the 6800 XT, which sold at 649. 
which led me to wonder, why did AMD create that card at that price in the first place? Getting back to the matchup against Nvidia, we were expecting this. And instead, we got another matchup, a sort of double team on the 4080. And it was confirmed by Frank Azor of AMD in his interview with Gordon at PC World that this is a 4080 competitor. A follow-up question from Gordon could have been, why did you create two cards to compete against the 4080? I don't think that's what AMD originally intended. According to Angstronomics, the spec for Navi 31 has been set for a couple of years, and back then they likely targeted one GPU to go against the 90 series and the other to go against the 80 series. But the performance of the 96 CU version didn't turn out as favorable since Nvidia went all out in the development of the BF GPU in the 4090. So AMD had to shift the focus to the one under it, which is the 4080. They couldn't show a 96 CU version labeled as a 7900 XT and an 84 CU version labeled as a 7800 XT, both competing against the 4080. That would look stupid. To fix that issue, they changed a couple of characters. Just changed a 7800 to a 7900 for the 84 compute unit version, and then add another X to the end of the top 96 CU version. Changing characters in the labels they put on these GPUs is very cheap to do. And then price the low-end 84 CU version up closer to the overpriced 4080. So while the 96 CU 7900 XTX looks like a really good generational upgrade at the same price, yay! The 84 compute unit version looks like it has been renamed to a 7900 XT and the price was increased $250 to slot in closer to the overpriced 4080. Boo. Again, nobody is gonna buy that card at $900. Nobody. This generational upgrade would work. This is going to fail. Another way to look at this is previously, AMD's 80 series competitor in the 6800 XT started at 649. Now, a generation later, AMD's 80 series competitor starts at 899 or a $250 increase. Ouch. What is getting lost in all of this is the constant comparison to the 4080 at $1199. That $500 price increase in Nvidia's 80 series GPU is not justified. I talked about that in my previous videos, and I showed that even with a worst case TSMC cost increase, that GPU should cost no more than $900. So don't compare to Nvidia's ridiculous $1200 price. If we stay within the AMD bubble and just look at the hardware specs to see what this 84 CU version really is, and it is a generational upgrade to the 6800 XT, which was at 649. The chiplet architecture of RDNA 3 should enable this to be lower cost than Big Navi since now we are dealing with a 300 mm square die and not a 520 mm square die. You can get almost twice as many die on a wafer by using the chiplet design but nobody is comparing it to AMD's last gen 80 series fighters since they are getting lost in the label that is placed on that 84 CU GPU. We should be looking under the hood at the specs. You should pay for the hardware, not pay for the label. And this makes me sad since the 6800 XT was in my opinion, the best value GPU in their lineup for those gaming beyond 1080p. You could game at 1440p high FPS or 4K60 no problem with this GPU. Even today, you can pick one up at Newegg for just over $500. Hmm, uh, they're all sold out at Newegg. And Micro Center too. I wonder if the announcement had something to do with that. By the way, if you like analysis videos like this, like, share, and subscribe. And let me know in the comments below if you think the 84 CU version labeled as the 7900 XT is overpriced. Back in January 2020, when Big Navi was just confirmed by Dr. Lisa Su at CES, another AMD executive said in an interview that Big Navi was going to disrupt 4K gaming and Team Red had a plan for 4K domination. That Big Navi was going to be disruptive like Ryzen was disruptive in the CPU market. Well... I haven't seen that happen. In fact, I could argue that AMD is going in the wrong direction. This is a chart I put together for quarterly market share going back over a decade using data source from John Petty Research. 
I took the raw data and then applied a two-year quarterly rolling average so that we can clearly see the long-term trends. 10 years ago, AMD had a 40% market share. Today, that has dwindled down to just 20% and we can see no impact from RDNA 2 increasing market share since it was launched in 2020. I don't see any evidence of Big Navi disrupting the market as AMD said it would. And with the RDNA 3 announcement, I don't see how it will be disruptive at all. If they want to disrupt the market, they need to come up with a big play. They need something like they did back in 2019. For those who don't know, AMD made a play against Nvidia with the release of the RX 5000 series in 2019. Back then, AMD was launching RDNA 1, and at the E3 conference in June, they showed the price of their GPUs. And several weeks later, just three days before the launch on July 7th, and after Nvidia already launched their Super Series refresh, AMD dropped the prices on the RX 5000 GPUs. Herkelman then tweeted, Jebated. With the new GPU chiplets, could it be possible AMD is setting up NVIDIA for another great debate? According to Dominic at Kit Guru, the night before the announcement, Scott Herkelman got up on stage and told the people there that AMD was going to kick NVIDIA's butt. I paraphrased and slightly cleaned it up a little. Go check out their video. I'll put a link in the description. But what was Scott so excited about? And then I got thinking. They hardly mentioned the 7900 XT at all during the presentation. They didn't provide any performance estimates for that GPU. In fact, that GPU was shown very dark as if it was lurking in the shadows, very stealth-like. It's as if they didn't want anyone to notice that GPU, including Nvidia. Could AMD be playing 4D chess? Are they letting Nvidia launch the RTX 4080 first? And then once that GPU is established at the high price of $1199 and more? Herkelman could then send out a tweet on December 10th with Jebated two times. AMD could then drop the price of the 7900 XT to 749. Think about this. Jensen publicly declared Moore's Law is dead and TSMC cost is too much as the explanations for the $500 increase in their 80 series GPU. With those public declarations, any price drop would make him much less credible to gamers and to his investors. How could AMD only increase the cost of its 80 series competitor GPU by $100? Chiplets. Look at how many more die you get per wafer with RDNA 3 on the right versus the large die in RDNA 2 on the left. It's almost double. And you get over 1600 die per wafer for the MCDs. And even using six of them, it's only about $40 in total cost. Smaller die and lower overall cost. That's the power of chiplets. By making a price cut like this, AMD could demonstrate the disruptive power of chiplets. Chiplets had a major impact in the CPU market, and now chiplets are ready to have a major impact on the GPU market. And how can Nvidia respond? They can price cut the 4080 to match the 7900 XTX, but it still would not win in rasterization. And the unlaunched 12 gigabyte 4080 renamed to a 4070 Ti only has 60 SMs so it will be trounced by the 7900 XT. AMD could tell the world, with chiplets, they offer one tier higher level of performance than Nvidia for the same money. Again, think about how this would look to gamers and investors. Nvidia said they had to raise the price of the 80 series GPU by $500. AMD, with their innovative chiplet design, would only need to raise the price of the 80 series GPU by $100 thus keeping the 80 series GPU performance level in the $700 range. Just the optics alone would score a major win for AMD. I think the end question really is, is AMD really ready to be disruptive with their GPU chiplets? This is not disruptive. This is disruptive. Let me know in the comments below if you think AMD's chiplets, as presented, are disruptive. This is my take. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.